Hello, everyone. We're just going to give everybody a, a minute or two here to join into the webinar before starting. All right. So good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming to our webinar. Um, today, we'll be talking about analog design for US reservoirs, going into a bit more detail on how we at Interface customize different microfluidic devices to optimize uh, well performance, specifically in the US region. So my name is Jelaine Fortin. I'm the technical account manager here at Interface. Um, I'll be moderating this webinar. Um, today, we're joined by Ali Abedini. He is uh, our executive VP of technical operations. Be sure to ask any questions in the chat. Um, you can also email us at webinar at interfacefluidics.com. There will also be some links in the chat to our social media, LinkedIn, um, as well as the, the email address. All right, so Interface Fluidics is a company that provides unique insights into the interactions and properties of reservoir fluids to improve off operating efficiencies and enable better long-term decisions for our clients. Our laboratory facility is located in Edmonton. Uh, we're in the National Institute of Nanotechnology, and our corporate headquarters are in Calgary. So Interface has experience working all over the world, uh, from Norway to Oman, uh, but today we're going to be focusing on some of the work that we've done in the US, from the Permian to the Eagleford, and so on. Some of our products include uh, fluid flow through porous media, looking at frac fluid optimization, regain conductivity, as well as enhanced oil recovery, anything from polymer flooding to foams and more, as well as SAG-D. We're also expanding into the PVT and phase behavior market, where we have products with minimum miscibility pressure and MME, as well as looking at different things like wax and asphaltine onset conditions, as well as diffusivity. I will now turn it over to Ali, and he'll walk you through our design and fabrication process. Uh, thank you, Jelaine, and uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, as Jelaine mentioned, uh, I'll be talking about the design and uh, the fabrication process that uh, basically we have at Interface Fluidics. So uh, basically microfluidics is the fundamental technology of Interface Fluidics. So what we do, uh, basically we use the microfluidics to look at the fluid behavior at the reservoir scale. Uh, by definition, microfluidics is a study of the fluid behavior at the micro and nano scale, which is very relevant to the uh, pore structure that we have in, uh, in uh, hydrocarbon reservoirs. What we do, we use our uh, optical tools to look at the fluid performance and fluid interactions um, at the relevant reservoir pressure and temperature. So this is slide, uh, I'm just walking you uh, through the high level of the process that we have at Interface. Uh, the first uh, is the res reservoir analog design. So what we do here, we uh, take uh, reservoir characteristics information to design the reservoir analog. Uh, we use pore throat size, uh, distribution, porosity, permeability, weatherability, and we also can ask more, uh, we can also have more information to, uh, to basically customize the design for the clients. Uh, I'll be um, uh, talking more about that. The next step is the in-house analog fabrication. So we have our fabrication expertise in-house and we are able to uh, basically fabricate our analogs. And we make sure that uh, basically all of these analogs, they pass the uh, quality control matrix that we have uh, in the company. Uh, once the uh, reservoir analog is ready, we use a representative fluid um, to do our testing. We use the formation brine oil and uh, we put them into the chip and then uh, we um, run um, our basically reservoir scale processes here. Again, I, I'm, I'll be talking about that. And um, finally, we grab all of these raw information, which most, uh, most likely they're in the form of the images and videos. We apply our uh, in-house image algorithm tools uh, in order to uh, make them into a quantitative um, data set. 
so people can understand what's going on and how they can basically make decision uh, from the information that they can provide. Uh, our fabrication process is something that has been practiced uh, in the industry. So it's the uh, photolithography. And then uh, we use a silicon substrate, we develop our mask. And once the mask of the design is ready, we use uh, we actually uh, do our etching. We either use um, RIE, uh, reactive ion etching, or uh, DRIE, which is deep reactive ion etching, depending on the, uh, the scale of our, uh, our analog. So once the... Um, Basically, the etching part is done. We do uh, we clean the the substrate. We actually remove the photo resist, and uh, then we do the uh, holding, depending on the point of the injection. And once it's done, we do our bonding. We actually use the anodic bonding to bond a, a silica, a, a, a basically glass, a borosilicate glass into our silicon substrate. And finally, basically, we dice them and turn them into a. Uh, different reservoir analogs to um, to run the experiment. So this is a sample CAD design. So we usually use the AutoCAD to um, design the uh, porous media. Um, we also have our uh, internal um, um, design system that can basically generate some automated design version. So uh, once it's ready again, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we can basically have these designs to be fabricated on silicon substrate and um, get it ready for our experiments. In addition to the silicon substrate, I should mention that we also do our glass glass um, fabrication. So we actually use that specifically for our SAGD uh, reservoir analog prep, but um, this is something that we also do uh, at Interface Politics. Uh, as I mentioned, we uh, basically take a lot of information of the reservoir as much as possible, and we try to use them in uh, customizing the design and make the, uh, the reservoir analog representative. So one thing is uh, the particle size analysis. So um, this graph shows a comparison between a, a target grain size distribution versus uh, the one that we design in our analog. So gray is target, uh, blue is analog, and you can see there is a very close match uh, in terms of the size of the particle that we, uh, we actually design in one of our analogs. Um, the other property is the pore throat size distribution. Uh, it's it's uh, basically the MICP uh, mercury injection capillary pressure data set. So we use uh, this information to come up with the size of the pore throat, and, and in some cases even the grain uh, the, the the pore body sizes. If not available, um, if we are given with some sort of SCM images or thin sections, uh, we are able to digitize these images and then uh, grab the information, uh, either the throat size or even the pore body size, and then try to, uh, to incorporate that into our um, design process. The other uh, um, information we can grab from the SCM or the thin section images is the morphology of the grains and pores. Uh, I think this is very important, especially for conventional reservoirs where the size of the uh, basic the pores are pretty big. So the, the, the fluid behavior is also dictated by the population of these, um, uh, these um, uh, pores and grains. So uh, you have a basic a sample uh, of how we basically try to mimic the morphology of the grains and the pores. So uh, we, as I mentioned, uh, once the, these images are digitized, uh, we are able to pull out the information of these uh, morphologies and then incorporate, incorporate them uh, into our design. And once everything is done, depending on whether we are working on conventional or unconventional reservoirs, we are able to, to uh, prep different analogs. So for example, for a conventional, uh, let's say San Joaquin Basin uh, down in uh, state. So uh, we can basically grab the information depending on the, uh, the, the, the type of the you know, reservoir rock, whether it's a single prosthety or dual prosthety permeability system, we are able to incorporate that into our design. We either can have single depth or dual depth system that, that can basically uh, mimic uh, the the uh, single or dual uh, prosthetic permeability system. Uh, we also try to make sure that uh, the pore and grain size are they are within the range of the uh, information that we are uh, given from the reservoir. 
And um, basically, once the design is ready, it can go into the fabrication process, and then uh, we can do any uh, study on that. So this is a sample. Once I mean, we typically use this design for, let's say, conventional EOR uh, processes. Um, either if you want to do, let's say, secondary water flood uh, followed by tertiary uh, chemical flood, we are able to use these analogs just to look at uh, the displacement efficiency, how much oil is being recovered, what's the distribution of the residual oil saturation. And, uh, in, and depending on the uh, on the visualization and quality, we are also able to pull out some information regarding trapping mechanisms, whether it's a snap off, bypass, capillary trapping. Uh, we are able to uh, basically monitor and, and report uh, those mechanisms. Uh, the other line of uh, uh, this work uh, can be uh, making the analogs for unconventional reservoirs. Uh, the main application is for a tight and, and shale systems and to look at uh, screening different flowback chemistries or flowback aids for, uh, for flowback. Uh, uh, performance. So, for example, uh, such as just Eagle Ford uh, formation. So, uh, again, as we have the uh, the porthrosite distribution, some of the SCM images and processing permeability, we are able to generate that design. So, he, the, the the image that you can see on the uh, bottom right is uh, is a snapshot of the uh, of our unconventional reservoir analog. So you can see it's a, it's a very heterogeneous pattern and you have two different media. So you have that triangle shape, a high porous uh, media that can represent the frac zone. And, and then the rest of the system is comprised of a nano throat, which uh, replicate the basic, the, the matrix, plus some, some sort of the isolated pore structures over there. In terms of the porosity and permeability, there is a, uh, there is a huge contrast between these two media. The frac has, uh, has, uh, has um, tens of Darcy perm and uh, over 30 to 40% porosity. Of course, we can design the frac depending on the mesh size of the propane. Um, and on the matrix side, um, we, we designed these nano throats down to um, tens of nanometers that can generate uh, na several hundred of nano Darcy to a very uh, low uh, micro Darcy's. So, uh, and in terms of the porosity, it's around five to six percent. So it can uh, mimic the combination of both the frac, the induced frac by the by the frac job, and this connectivity through the matrix. Um, uh, in addition to those, we are also able to customize uh, different analogs. Um, so um, in addition to let's say single layer of the porous media, we are able to generate multi-layer system. Uh, that can have different uh, layers with different processes and permeabilities. Uh, through that, uh, we can look at the uh, impact of different heterogeneity uh, in, the, in the reservoir system and how it impacts the uh, flow behavior, uh, the displacement efficiency, uh, the trapping mechanisms. Um, for example, uh, the application can be in, and if you would like to look at the conformance behavior of your uh, additives such as polymer or foam and how the sweep efficiency will be changed uh, from the low perm zone to high perm zone, we are able to, to do that. So basically, we just need to know the range of the perm and porosity and, and, and different layers that you guys have. So we are able to, uh, to represent that into our system, into our, into our analogs, and then see uh, the behavior of the fluid flow uh, into these um, uh, multi-layers heterogeneous media. Um, so uh, these are all about the, uh, the design process and fabrication. So once it's ready, um, the next step is how we, we actually implement our uh, testing protocol and run the experiments. So the first off is the initial saturation. We use the um, basic formation brine and oil in order to saturate the system and establish the initial uh, water and oil saturation. And um, we don't use a lot of these uh, fluids. So 500 milliliters of oil is more than enough for us to run uh, 50 to hundreds of these tests because the pore volumes and the overall volume of these uh, analogs are they're extremely small. It's not comparable with the conventional uh, physical models. And um, 
once the initial uh, saturations are ready, uh, then we can look at different uh, different processes. So you can inject water, polymers, surfactants, any any additives into the AQ as an aqueous phase and see how much um, basically recovery you get from the reservoir. And more and all of these uh, experiments they are run at representative reservoir temperature and pressure. And um, we, we are able to match uh, a lot of uh, reservoir conditions depending on uh, where they're located. The other piece is the weatherability modification. Again, uh, wetting condition of the system is very important to, uh, to fluid flow and the performance of different uh, cases. So what we can do, we are also able to modify the surface wetting condition, uh, whether it's oil wet or water wet, we have our um, in-house uh, basically modification protocol to change it from either water wet to, to, to the oil wet. Again, uh, just for your information, silicon substrate is naturally water wet, so they're well uh, represented of the water wet system, but uh, depending whether if you want to be an intermediate wet or, uh, or oil wet, we are able to accommodate that. And we are also able to measure the contact angle to confirm whether the initial uh, initial contact angle or initial weatherability is, is correct. We use a fluorescent microscopy typically here. So the image that you see on the right side is the top view image of our uh, our system. The greenish color there is oil because we and the reason that we use a fluorescent microscopy because it can it can capture the fluorescent uh, intensity of the oil coming from the um, the natural. Uh, properties of, of hydrocarbons. And then the, the non-oil phase, they, they turn into dark uh, color. So you can easily um, look at the interface and the meniscus. And by drawing the tangential lines, you're able to, uh, to measure the contact angle. And depending on the range of the contact angle, you can see whether you're in the water wet or oil wet or in the intermediate wet uh, condition. And uh, lastly, again, as the analog is ready, we are able to do an inv or investigate a lot of processes. Uh, we are able to look at the flowback um, performance. Uh, again, we're using our flowback analog. We can uh, we, we do the regain conductivity as as Julian mentioned. Do the chemical EOR optimization and uh, fluid performance. Institute rheology of some of these chemicals, such as uh, polymers. This is something that we also can 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 look at. Flow assurance, um, um, I mean, um, looking at the wax uh, crystallization during the, the um, injection or, or production, or even looking at the asphalt in deposition as a, as a, a change in the uh, physical and uh, thermodynamical properties of, of the system. And we can do more again. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, we can have uh, the the glass-glass the, um, micro models uh, in order to look at the uh, thermal processes, uh, which is uh, uh, SAGD in most cases, and also addition of the solvents such as SA SAGD, uh, how solvents can contribute into the um, into the steam process. Um, so to wrap up my my talk here again, uh, what we would like to do at interface is design and fabricating custom analog. We would like to make sure that the analog that we design here is uh, is a, a true representative of what uh, you guys have in your uh, actual fields. Of course, any lab uh, system comes with uh, its own limitations. I don't think if there is any lab system out that can uh, basically cover all of the uh, properties, characteristic and heterogeneities that uh, we are facing in the actual field, but that's our first goal. And with that, then we are able to run our system much, uh, our, our experiments and testing much faster and to provide uh, our clients with a, a better data set uh, so it can help them into their uh, in their decision making process. Um, so we are able to quantify the increased production from different chemical additives, uh, as I mentioned, polymers, surfactants, um, ASP, whatever you guys think. Uh, also, we are able to basically um, find the right chemistry for the oil or even for your well, depending on the well locations. Um, we can also optimize the concentration. So you, uh, in some cases, you don't need to overcapitalize your well by just injecting more chemistry that uh, might not do much for you. And um, in the last, we are also able to try new methods, new chemistries with these uh, low risk analogs. So I would say uh, it's better to break a, a low risk chip uh, rather than breaking your reservoir. So it's much more uh, cost effective. 
Um, with that, uh, so um, thank you for you guys uh, joining our webinar. I'm open uh, to take any questions. So Joanne, back to you. Perfect. Thanks so much, Ali, for presenting. Um, I'd encourage everybody to please use the chat and um, post any questions that you have. We actually have a question from Ray Ellis. So thank you, Ray. He asks, can the silica-based substrate represent non-silica reservoirs such as clay-rich organic shales or carbonates? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, in short, uh, no. Uh, so uh, silicon substrate is well uh, representative of the sandstone. So one, once it comes to carbonate or shale rich formation, it's uh, from, from geological perspective, it's not a good match. But as I mentioned, uh, we are able to match the, the, the weathability of the system. So for usually for organic rich system, they are, they're mostly water, uh, sorry, oil wet. So we can alter the, the wettability. For carbonate reservoir, again, the wettability can be, can be modified, but uh, what it lacks is basically is the fluid rock interactions and the, the, the uh, reaction between the rock and, and fluid that they miss over there. So when it comes to the carbonate, it's mostly on the, uh, the fluid fluid interactions. But again, these are some of the limitations that we have uh, in our system. Uh, again, it doesn't mean that we are not working on them. So from, uh, from a development perspective, we, we are working on these to address the geology. Uh, but at this point, uh, we don't have any full commercialized version of incorporating geology into our system. Great, thank you, Ali. You mentioned that um, we modify our reservoir analogs before starting investigating any processes. Um, what, what sort of wettability capabilities do we have throughout the process in terms of observing um, wettability changes due to different chemicals? Yeah, a good question, Julian. Again, um, uh, the way that we, uh, we change and modify the, the initial wettability of the system by taking the pore scale images, we are able to do that throughout the process and at the uh, end time of, of of experiment technically. So what we can, we, we know what the initial wettability and the contact angle range is for our system. Once the, the process is finalized and finished, again, we can go into the porous scale of the system, take high resolution images, and then measure the post-process contact angle and come up with the range of the wettability and whether see if there is any modification, whether it tends to be more water wet or no change, or if there's any damage to the wettability, whether you see more oil wet system after the process, uh, we are able to do that. So um, yeah, that's, that's the answer. Great. Um, okay, we have another question coming in. Uh, it says, can you incorporate stress into the regained permeability when simulating prop and pack fractures? Um, no, we can't. So we can't incorporate the stress because our system is basically uh, it's capsulated with a uh, with a predefined um, size of the porous media, and once it's basically bonded with uh, with the top uh, borosilicate glass, it's somehow it's just a simple porous media. Uh, we uh, might be able to basically increase or adjust the shear rate and shear stress due to the fluid uh, injection into our system. By, up, by basically adjusting the flow rate. Um, so we are able to do that, actually mimic the flow dynamics happening uh, through the, uh, the frac drop or injection process. But uh, stress and strain coming from the uh, rock itself, which basically in, in, in general form the geomechanics, that's not something that we can, uh, we can uh, basically simulate into our system. Great. Uh, we have another question on our temperature range. Maybe you can touch on uh, both our temperature and pressure capabilities. Yeah, I mean, uh, it really depends on the uh, on the product that we work on, but uh, typically uh, we are able to go up to 150 degree of uh, centigrade, so it's around 300 degree of Fahrenheit. Pressure wise, we can go up to uh, five to 600 bar. I mean, for, for US guys, it's around uh, seven to 8,000 PSI. Again, this is not the never ending work for us. We always increase our capability uh, in terms of uh, increasing the pressure and temperature. Uh, for example, for our, for our PVT stuff, we can go up to 7,000 PSI at this point. Uh, our near, uh, near goal is to get to 10,000 PSI uh, before the end of 2021 and then go to 14,000 PSI uh, for 2022. Uh, which can cover a larger, a large portion of the reservoirs that we have. 
Great. Um, so we've touched a little bit on different maybe damage mechanisms that we can see in our system. Do you want to maybe elaborate on um, some other things we see like precipitation or emulsion in our system? Yeah, I mean, again, everything goes back to the quality and the resolution of the images that we take from our system. Um, so, for example, if for, for SAGDI cases where there is a high um, uh, generation of the emulsion, we are able to, to, to basically look at whether if they're forming, if they're forming, what's the particle, what's the emulsion side distribution of those, especially for wax and uh, ash volcanoes, yes, again, um, depending on the process, uh, for example, if you're dealing with the temperature change, so we can uh, we can use our cross polar microscopy and, and just uh, visualize the wax crystallization its growth, and also working on whether the wax crystallization it's a it's a reversible process or not depending on the size of the porous media. We've done some work on that uh, front. In terms of the ash voltings, again, if you include solvent to your system that can uh, destabilize the ash voltings. Uh, we can use our, our fluorescent microscopy to uh, to uh, quantify how much ash voltage has been dropping out. Again, depending on the on 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 the um, process and damage mechanisms, we are able to employ the right microscopy to see whether they are forming or not uh, throughout the process. Okay, great. Uh, we have another question from the chat. Uh, what shear rates can you simulate? Uh, it, it really depends again. So it can go to, let's say, uh, around seven um, reciprocal of second, which is uh, in the range of the, uh, the polymer flooding, uh, for example, or it can go much bigger than that. Again, we don't have a lot of limitation. Um, so when you talk about the shear rate, there are other pieces to that. So for example, for, for, for our injection, uh, we, you, you need to, uh, you need to be within the range of the capillary numbers that people having in the reservoir uh, uh, flooding. So we, we can mimic around 10 to the power of minus five, minus four, minus six, that's range of the capillary trapping, sorry, capillary number that we can do. So um, again, not a big limitation on that because we, have, we can control the flow rates and all the shear rate capillary number, they all come from the uh, adjusting your flow rate in the system. Great, uh, we have a question coming in from Al. How or can you mimic profit, profit embedment in the matrix? Uh, short answer, no. The reason is we haven't included any, any solid materials uh, into our system. Um, we might be able to do it in the future. That's something that we can, we can, we can have a look. But uh, in the short term, um, we are not doing it now. One of the reasons is if you want to have the propane into the actual uh, basically porous media size. Um, one of the drawback is you may not uh, get a very repeatable result from test to test. So at this point, no, we don't have any propane embedment into our system. It's majorly on the fluid fluid interactions now, but at the, at the relevant confinement that uh, we have with our, uh, with our propane in the system. Great. Is that something that could be potentially designed into a, an analog to be representative of uh, prop and embedment? Uh, yeah, I mean, so again, if you use, depending on the mesh size of the prop and if, let's say if you are doing 4070 mesh size, so you, you have an idea what sort of uh, prosody and the, uh, the space that propane generates into the fracture. So we are able to match that, uh, that part. But uh, let's say making a fracture that has, let's say, centimeters of this size and then trying to mimic the actual pore size by adding the propane in. Again, that's not something that we can do now. Uh, again, um, anything can be possible, but at the same time, you want to make sure that the results that you get is repeatable and reproducible. So at this point, we don't have any, any solid way to make it, um, to make a repeatable result out of these uh, propans into our system. Okay, thank you. All right, um, if there are any more questions, please feel free to um, add them into the chat. Otherwise, you can always reach out to one of us at Interface Fluidics. You can email webinar at interfacefluidics.com. Oh, sorry, one more question coming in. Can you simulate fluid imbibition for displacing oil with huff and puff type treatments? Oh, very good question. I mean, fluid imbibition can be done um, regarding the huff and puff 
Um, so we did some internal work. Um, it can be doable. Uh, we haven't um, got any uh, any client or partner to work with. Um, it's a bit harder than the continuous injection because once you once you do the continuous injection, you have an injector and producer, and you can look at the sweep efficiency. But once it comes to the uh, half and puff, the system has to be closed during the injection, and then you do the puff cycle. Um, yeah, we are we are looking uh, into it um, very seriously. It, if there is a really good partner who was able to work uh, on that with us, we are uh, uh, more than welcome. Uh, again, uh, depending on the design, we are able to do any or match any design that you guys are looking at. In terms of the experimental protocol, again, we have a really good a track of record of uh, designing different experimental methodology to address different uh, different um, schemes and, and, and uh, reservoir injection themes. So yeah, I mean, uh, um, it's it, it needs a bit of uh, work, but uh, it's something that we really like to try. And I think we are able to do that. Great. Uh, taking it back to the shear rate questions, we have another one from Ahmed. Is the shear rate calculated as a global or can be calculated in each region based on the flow distribution? Um, um, we can do it. I mean, when we say region, exactly, we can't measure the shear rate in a specific throat, but uh, what we can do, so what, okay, the way that we measure our shear rate is not the way that people do in, in conventional measurements. So they take the, 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 the flow rate and they, they assume the, the, the institutional velocity and then convert it into the shear rate. What we can, what we do literally here, because we have a really good visualization of the fleet flow into the porous media, we can measure the actual institutional velocity and then uh, incorporate that velocity into the equation to get the shear rate. So our shear rate is the true measurement of the institute shear rate of the system. So let's say if you have a multi-perm system that you have different frontal advancement or front velocity, uh, institute velocity in each region, then we are able to uh, to calculate the shear rate depending on the change in the uh, in the in the pore characteristics. But let's say measuring the shear rate at let's say a very tiny escape pore throat. No, that's not something that we can do. But again, depending how much heterogeneity you, you incorporate into your design, uh, and if we get different, let's say, uh, flow velocities in the system, then we are able to calculate the corresponding shear rate. Great. Perfect. I'll maybe give it a, a few more seconds in case any other questions come in. But uh, thanks again, Ali, for presenting. It's very informative. Um, if anyone has any other questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, We'll also be posting the recording of this webinar on our YouTube channel. So if, if any of your colleagues were interested and missed out, you can, we'll be sending the link out and you can share that with them um, as well. Feel free to subscribe for any upcoming webinars that, uh, that we'll be hosting in the, in the near future. All right, thank you very much. Thanks everyone.